In a previous video, we went to, we opened a browser and went to sun.com and we said download Solaris. You could just do this from a Google search. And we went in here and we clicked on open Solaris and we chose to download Open Solaris for Windows and then we closed our browser and in your case if you were following along on a PC you could have installed Solaris onto a PC if you didn't have a PC I recommended a virtual PC with the virtual box software now during the installation we ran out of resources. I used up all 2 gigs of my memory and my two CPUs were maxed out. I was about to crash. So I paused it and which is something you're able to do here on the file when a PC is running and I rebooted my system. So let's choose Open Solaris and hit Start. Let's go ahead and see if our state was chained, saved. If it was, then what we'll do in this video is to log in and reboot the system. And we see Open Solaris is being restored. This is the wonders and greatness of having a virtual machine. Instead of having the machine completely crash and lose all our work, but that's more on that on virtualization video. This is the Open Solaris video where we install Open Solaris onto windows in the virtual box virtualization software so assuming you're not using virtualization just ignore everything I just said and focus on the fact that we installed Solaris if you need to go back and look at the part one and two of the installation and then now we're gonna log in for the first time after installation Let's hit OK and let's put our password in. And here we are logging into Solaris for the first time. It's setting up its uh, virtual environment. And this is very similar to Windows or a Linux with a graphical user interface. Of course, this is not the true power of Unix, the true power is the command line. So again, once we're logged in, we're going to try and look at the features that make Solaris a great Unix to work with. If we look at the top, this might seem familiar to you. In the Windows world, This would be the start button, and we have accessories, calculators, and so on, games. Of course, no one installed Solaris just for games. Internet, we have different browsers and emails, and open office, and different tools. On the system tools of the application menu, a very important program is the terminal. You may or may not have seen that before. If we go ahead and launch it, it gives us the ability to issue commands. Let's make this a little smaller if we can. So we say zoom out and zoom out some more if possible. Maybe that's too small. Let's zoom back in. All right, but before we use the terminal, this was a little difficult to find. So let's go ahead and right click on the terminal and say add to the launcher panel. And we see it was placed here. Let's do it again and say add to desktop and we see an icon was placed here. So now if we close this window by clicking on the X, we no longer have to come back in and search for it. We could just launch it by double clicking this or we could launch it here by single clicking. Let's go ahead and zoom out. So if you haven't seen any Unix commands before, don't worry. We're just testing to make sure we can issue commands. If we type cal, it stands for calendar of the current year, current month. If we wanted the time, we could type the date command. If we wanted to clear the screen, we could type the command clear. 
if we wanted to see all of last year, we could say Cal 2007. Just clear the screen. And we could say Cal 9 or Cal 2 2007. It should bring up February of last year and so on. It's clear. LS would list what's in our current directory, PWD, tell us where we're located. We're inside a folder called export, and inside there, there's a folder called home, which is where the users are. I am the Rogriff user. We'll learn more about this later. And you could do various things like copy and paste text. The important thing to learn here is the ability to use text to manipulate the computer, which is what Unix is all about. So let's go ahead and uh, reboot or power off this computer because all we wanted to do was to show that the Solaris installation was successful. Let's go ahead and power off. And you notice it says permission denied. That's because I am the user Rogriff. I don't have enough power or permission or rights. So I have to become the super user. We're going to learn more about this later. And now, if I try the power off command, it should go ahead and power off the Solaris Unix machine. And so I hope that your installation went smoothly if you were going along. I try to make these videos as clear as possible, but it's so important to practice on your own. Uh, if you have an old machine, an old PC, that you, there's no data on it that you need, or if you could afford to buy a separate new PC, that's even better. And in the case that you have neither of those, but you have access to any computer with some space and an internet connection, you could install any operating system, including one of the best Unix is out there, Solaris, inside of a virtual machine. In this case, we use the VirtualBox free virtualization software from Sun. And uh, now you have an environment in which to play and learn Unix, even set up a business or an internet site. And here we have the VirtualBox setting, shutting down. Um, if you're not using VirtualBox, then this part might not be relevant and here we have the machine powered off it's as it says powered off right here if we right click on it you see we could start it or we could click the start button to go back into it and so let's click start and it should launch a terminal and it should go ahead and bring up the startup screen we could hit enter and it will load the operating system. In the beginning of this video, we had started from a previously frozen state where I used the virtual machine to save the state. If I was using a real computer, of course, we, we couldn't do that. But the actual reboot was from a previous video where we did the installation. So you could go ahead and stop this video right now. In case you missed that video and you wanted to see the typical Solaris reboot, you could go ahead and or boot up from being in a powered off state. You could go ahead and finish looking at this video. In a upcoming video, we will look at using Unix in a more practical manner. So far, all we've done is look at Unix loaded inside of Windows using the SIGWIN program. Now we're looking at Unix, although we installed it inside of a virtual machine in Windows, it doesn't think it's uh, being installed in a virtual machine. It actually behaves as a, a real Unix or Solaris box. So. This was a good example of how production or more practical installations of Unix proceed. And here the boot is finished and it's switching from the text environment to the graphical user interface. That's it for this video.